everyone, this is Polly from WormFarmingReveal.com and today I'm going to talk about using nature's own medium to fill up your garden tower. So I'm doing a video here on behalf of the uh, garden tower project and I'm going, going to demonstrate to you the way that I fill up the garden tower with medium that nature provides for free. So some of you go out and you buy your pot potting soil. There's nothing wrong with that uh, as long as you're getting good quality natural or organic soil. But um, I always like to do things the way that uh, nature, that you can already find in nature and it's also the way that I garden. And other than using worm castings, there's, there's a lot of great uh, soil mixes out there and there's all kinds of different ways to, to garden. There's all kinds of, of uh, different ways to uh, grow a plant. And what I'm going to do basically is just show you the way that I do it. And um, like I said, nature already has what a plant needs you don't necessarily have to go out and spend money you could use your own backyard to acquire uh, the food that plants really like here I have all kinds of different um, soil amendments and you don't have to use all of the stuff here I have it sitting out here for demonstration purposes and I I'm gonna go ahead and, and use all of this but uh, you definitely don't have to use all of it. Actually, all you really need, if, if it's all you have, is regular soil and then worm castings and minerals. And you can get away with that. However, uh, you will have to increase the amount of worm castings that you, you put in, like up to maybe 33%. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. It just depends on the quality of your worm castings. So, um, what I'm going to show you, first of all, is this container right here, which is worm castings. And if you can see, it's just the right texture. I can mold it to whatever shape I want, but then I can easily crumble it. That's a good moisture consistency, and uh, that's pretty much how, how good quality worm castings are and if you could come in here come over here and, and get a look at this for the viewers many of you know that I have uh, goats so you might find a little bit of goat poop in there very minimal but that is actually not bad it's uh, some good cold manure over here what I have is a mixture of Partially composted, I would say mostly composted, hay and goat manure. <clears throat> if you can see right here, here's a worm cocoon. So this here is loaded with uh, worms and cocoons. All I did was have my pile sitting out there for the worms to <clears throat> naturally come to indigenous worms of all sorts and they'll, they'll come in and they'll uh, start consuming everything and they'll break it down and uh, when you use it you'll have plenty of cocoons and worms to put in your your planter your garden or your garden tower and I'll tell you why I like to use this in a minute here by the way worm castings free and my composted hay and goat manure free. This right here is peat moss and of course it's not free but you don't have to use that if you don't want to. What I tell people is to go out and get what you can. Get, get what you can get for free or what you can afford. If, if all you have is a certain of something go out and use it. Just do what you can do to start growing food yourself. 
This right here is just regular garden soil. And it, it's, it's free and it adds a nice buffer because you don't want to use full compost uh, or worm castings uh, as a whole. Now these right here, if you can get in on this, this is wood chips. And you can see, it looks like I added wood chips and some soil, but I didn't. These wood chips are actually about a year and a half old. And I've done a video on that, on how to acquire wood chips for free, uh, if you go to my YouTube channel. Um, but this right here is a good, it's, it's a mixture of composted wood chips. Uh, they've just been breaking down over a year and a half. And it's insect frass and worm castings. And just a lot of great beneficial microbes. And I'll show you why I like to use it. Okay, and over here, this is, by the way, that was free, yeah. And this right here is a good, nice brick of cocoa coir. You don't have to use this, but um, it's a really nice mulch. Also, you can, you can use it as medium. And it's just another brick. This right here is hay. It's kind of spent hay that I use. Uh, the goats don't eat all of the hay. They leave some behind and you can use this. You can break it all down and you can use it uh, as part of your medium just like I do the wood chips or uh, you can use, use it as a mulch. Straw works great and leaves work great too. Here we have uh, our minerals and I'll talk about that later. It is, it's an assortment of minerals. And here we have the garden tower, the old garden tower, which you can see now that I've got the new one. Thank you, Thomas and team. Uh, now that I got the new one, I'm only going to actually use some of the uh, medium that's in here already because Believe it or not, even just regular garden soil, you can grow something out of, even though it doesn't have all the nutrition that you're searching for, it still has some nutrition in it. And a garden tower is going to have a lot more nutrition in it from uh, past season. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can use some of this. And if you, you're not gonna use any garden soil, then use some of this. You know, all kinds of different ways to mix your mediums around. Uh, there's no 100% this is how you do it. I'm just showing you this is the way I do it. And if you've read my books or uh, you've, you've gone to my website, you can see the produce on how nature does it just using the materials that are laying around. And Right here I have a bag of mycelium. And don't have to use that, but every little bit of, of something really great helps you get give the plant that optimal nutrition. Even using kelp meal or uh, rabbit poop, just a little bit of that Rabbit poop is a good cold manure. Any type of cold manure adding to it, any type of uh, good composted uh, manure or straw, hay, leaves, any of that, as long as it comes from the ground, uh, is a great medium. So um, here we have a bucket of worms that I went digging around and found. So they're going to be used as the night crawlers for the garden tower itself and then we've got red wigglers to put in the compost too. Okay, now that I'm done with that and I've shown you all kinds of different mediums that you could use, we're going to start mixing up the mediums and uh, I'll get everything prepared for that and be right back. Okay, so here we go, on with the mix. 
Now you can count here, we got one, two, three, four, five. We have five different mediums here. And then our garden tower soil left over would be six. So what I tell people is use 25% worm castings to uh, three, 75% uh, other stuff, or one part worm castings to three parts uh, other soil amendments. Or you can use one part worm castings to four parts other mixes or mediums, or you can even go uh, one-fifth of worm casting. So it just depends on all the different types of materials that you want to use. So what I'm going to do here, since I have one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to go ahead and omit the uh, garden soil, since that's, that's not uh, optimum for me, and we're going to have some other stuff in there that's a little bit better but not too overwhelming for our plant. Um, garden soil is really good to use uh, because it helps anchor the roots down into the soil a little bit better so that it's not uprooted. Um, however you use too much of it and it can really uh, make the roots kind of struggle to go in and out. A lot of people, they'll use perlite in order to help aerate the soil and, and make it a little more loose. However, I, I don't like using anything that, doesn't, that isn't natural and can't break down over time because, believe it or not, this stuff right here, the partially composted hay and goat manure, um, it's more composted than, than, than not. So. Uh, what I like about that is it's got a lot of the hay still in there, which helps to aerate the soil, make it more loose, and those roots don't have to struggle as hard to get through the soil and to just spread out as fast as they can. There's, there's no resistance. So um, that's kind of another thing for the wood chips and coca coir. If you use anything carbonous, that you're going to use helps to aerate the soil and gives you that food for the microbes, the worms, insects um, throughout the growing season. And it just breaks down over time. It just becomes plant food. And that's nature's way of doing it. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do, like I said, is omit the garden soil and we're gonna use one part worm castings. Put that in our mix. And one part partially composted hay and goat manure. And, well, what the heck, we'll put some. I don't normally use uh, peat moss but I've had this sitting around a while and it actually is, it's not fresh peat moss. This is, it's been sitting around here, so it's partially composted peat moss. And our wood chips. Composted wood chips for about a year and a half. That's a really big one. Okay, and Coco Coir, we're not going to add to it, but we're going to add the garden tower. And come over here and look at this. I guess, I guess you've already seen it, but uh, my wife has been harvesting the basil, cilantro, and kale that's been coming out of it already. And these are just voluntary. I didn't, I didn't plant them, they're just left over from last year. It went to seed and then the seeds dropped down and I haven't even watered it at all this year either. So whatever water, moisture that it's gotten in, <clears throat> gotten has been from uh, the heavens above. So um, what I'm gonna do is uh, put this on pause and I'm gonna gather up some of this and I'm gonna dump it in for the mix. Okay, so here we have 
our harvested soil from the garden tower last year. All right, and one final thing that we need is our minerals, which I already have mixed up in here. And we have an assortment of minerals. Now, you don't need all the different minerals that I have, but I have it anyway, so I like to use it. Um, the reason is, I'll tell you what I have. I've got lime, agricultural lime, come in here. I have agricultural lime, glacial rock dust, azomite, and diatomaceous earth. I really love diatomaceous earth and I've got like five pages on it. it just, uh, I can't say enough great things about it, but it's silica and all plant life and, and even us uh, humans, animals, we need silica. And it contains uh, about 86, 84% silica. And the rest are trace minerals, about 14 trace minerals. Now the azomite, the azomite does contain silica too. It's a little uh, pinkish and it contains 70 plus trace minerals. So if azomite is really all you use, that's great stuff too. Agricultural lime, that could be all that you need. Uh, ground eggshells, that could be all that you need. Ground oyster cells, that could be all that you need. Uh, glacial rock dust. Um, uh, green sand. I would have some other stuff with the green sand. Dolomite. Uh, there's so many minerals uh, to use. Uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, if you get my book, there's like 19 different minerals that I talk about in there. But I like to use, I mean, if we're only using glacial rock dust, uh, the way that it's mined, you may not be getting everything in that particular pocket of glacial rock dust or that particular pocket of azomite even though this stuff is tested you never know so I just kind of like to go with all kinds of different types of beneficial minerals so but I don't want anybody to think that uh, you need all kinds of different if you can afford it and you want to spend a little bit of money for it the miner minerals are gonna last you a long time if you you buy them in uh, large enough bulk uh, but here we have everything that we need already mixed up, and I'm going to add it to our mix. And I always tell people to be very generous when it comes to the minerals. And after I, I plant my seeds or seedlings, I still add some more minerals in there. So, we'll just mix our mix up real good. And if you had some other types of boosters that you wanted to put in, now would be a great time to do it. Stuff like uh, kelp meal, fish meal, anything like that. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So here we have you can see all the different wood chips and the partially composted hay that's in there. And this is great because it adds aeration to the, to the mix. Um, and then the next thing, this is not necessary, but if you wanted to, you could add a few sprinkles of mycelium. And why mycelium, do you say? That's a good question. I'm so glad you asked. Uh, because of mycelium, you'll have to do your own research. I don't want to make this video too long. But mushrooms are the fruit of fungus. Uh, mycelium. And their filaments go all throughout searching for dead matter. And the mycelium hooks onto that dead matter and starts to con consume it. This is what I call, and underneath the ground you have this whole web of nutrition. And it just starts growing, attaching itself everywhere uh, like, a, like a huge web, kind of like the internet, the information highway. 
and it really is kind of the the nutrition highway of the soil because the little filaments the little hollow if you ever lifted up a log bark whatever on the ground and you see those um, little filaments they're hollow and they all connect to one another and what the plant does is it go, goes uh, grows its roots down into the soil and then the roots tap in to the mycelium and they kind of go in and they do this handshake but they're locked in there permanently at least for the life of the plant or the life of the mycelium which is generally the mycelium lasts a pretty long time and it's tapped in there and it's getting nutrition from it because there could be a water source over yonder and the mycelium can have its webbing attached into that water source and if there's no rains that come well the plant root is getting its nutrition from that nutritional highway so that's one of the great benefits of adding mycelium to it now it's not absolutely necessary it's just another one of those little added benefits if you want to do it and if you know me by now any of you I like to do just as much as I can to ensure that my plants get all the potential nutrition that they can uh, feast on kind of like uh, a great buffet Kind of like a lot of you feed the worms in the inner tube. They've got that compost that they can go in and out of the, of the tube and they can feast on the uh, compost, the, the dying vegetation, as they want to. So, our mix is done and we're going to head over here to start filling up. And... Again, we'll start filling this up and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our mix ready to go, we're going to start uh, putting our mix in. And I want to remind you that this may not be the preferred way to do it. Uh, it's just the way that I do it. So I hope that I don't contradict anything that the Garden Tower project is uh, trying to establish. Uh, now on our inner tube, on the bottom you could add um, real thick shredded paper, moist shredded paper, coca coir or a few sheets of newspaper. That just kind of keeps any of the worms from falling down into the bottom reservoir here because you don't want to lose your worms until enough compost has been or worm castings has been established to help bridge um, the worm castings and keep the worms up above the worm castings usually you'll you'll find some stragglers down there um, in the worm castings but um, worms sometimes are migratory so they're going to do that you won't keep a hundred percent up into the compost uh, where they they should be so here we have about maybe three inches of cocoa courier since I have it on hand <clears throat> and uh, then I'm going to add my worms down here and can you get that these are my red wigglers from one of my worm bins and this here is uh, shredded newsprint and some hay and some goat manure and uh, banana peels some food scraps I think some of the best we'll just put those in right there there's uh, corn on the cob some more banana peel And I think some of the best 
food is number one is you got to have your carbon because you add too much food into the column and you're going to have all kinds of issues just like in nature you don't find worms feasting on tons of fruit and veggies they're on the floor and they're eating mostly carbon and that's some of their favorite food of course they like the simple sugars and they like the starches of uh, the fruits and veggies that you put in uh, that's just natural and it's kind of nature's way of going in and, and hitting that fruit and uh, nitrogen uh, before it starts to rot too much um, <clears throat> but uh, we have a lot of carbon which is hay shredded paper cocoa coir um, anything that uh, grows leafage wise or foliage wise um, that ends up dying turning brown and uh, drying out you want to moisten that add that to 20, uh, 20 to 1 carbon nitrogen ratio and sometimes you can have a little bit more uh, nitrogen than than your one ratio but that's pretty much how you want to do your tube or basically we're just kind of mimicking nature and we're mimicking what you do in your own worm bin already and everybody knows uh, who's experienced enough raising worms that you don't want to add too much uh, nitrogen sources so um, now that we have that and you may want to fill it up even higher but for demonstration purposes uh, we're going to add some more coconut uh, cocoa coir on top and the reason for adding cocoa coir or shredded paper or dead fall leaves or hay straw just uh, shredded newsprint on top is that you want to keep that smell covered up so you don't uh, attract a lot of flies and other unwanted insects like I said cut down on those food scraps that you had all right so we're gonna fill this up and then we'll add some water to it and this is kind of generally when I would add even some more minerals just because you can never get have too much minerals okay so we'll get this filled up and then uh, water it I'll be right back all right now with the help of my mower over here in my my sprayer we're gonna water this and these generally do take quite a bit of water initially in the beginning and I'll add some more minerals here and then continue to water that just check the tray and once we start to have some drippage we'll stop and the reason why you want to water this now is because there's a lot of air in there and the air is lighter than the soil in the water and it's wanting to come out that makes everything else settle down and if you filled up each tray all the way up as high as however many trays you have and then you water it you're going to be at quite a loss in, in soil so when we're done with this what i like to do is still keep a lot of my mix that way even uh, as it does settle down doing it the right way here after it does settle down we're going to have to add some more, more uh, mixture and over the period of the growing season you're also going to want to add a little bit more mixture to it so 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on the next trays and uh, each tray I'm going to water and add a little bit more minerals and then once it's all done uh, I'll be back. So we're done uh, filling up all the trays and um, now you might want to something I didn't mention was um, down here on this tube I would follow Garden Tower uh, projects recommendations on uh, how much to fill it up. I think it's uh, either a quarter or a third the way up with uh, compost and then you want to cover it with uh, some good mulch, carbon mulch. Now <clears throat> our next step is you can use any type of carbon mulch but we're going to use some uh, cocoa coir and we're going to lay it on top of this. So right down here is where we have the cocoa coir and we're just going to water it down and expand it and I'll fast forward the video. it as a mulch and here we have our worms our night crawlers come in here please and we'll just lay them up on top around here and I went hunting for these and if you want to know exactly how to attract night crawlers which is what we want to use for the outside or the night crawlers that like to make their drillospheres or their burrows. They'll go down and out and they'll probably grab, they come up and they grab, there's a worm cocoon, I'm sorry. Always interesting, excited when I see worm cocoons, that means uh, that I'm doing something right. Um, but anyway, uh, they'll go down and up, they'll come up on top and they'll grab their food and they'll take it back down in their burrows and they will probably go towards the compost tube as well and then come back out. Uh, if you can't attract them on your own, like I said, go check my video on attracting uh, the night crawlers for free. It's so simple. Uh, but, but if you want to go purchase them, Walmart sells them. Um, I've got a picture here. Uh, and on my website, i got a whole page on how to... Uh, attract the worms so Walmart has them check your local bait shop <clears throat> but you want to put your night crawlers on top and in the center is your composting worms such as your wet red wigglers and your European night crawlers now we'll just put this on This right here will help keep any flies out. It's just a nylon paint strainer that you can pick up at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store or paint store should have them. This is a one gallon. And now we're gonna put this, our Coco Coyer on top. And you would not believe how well that this keeps the moisture in. Because now we don't have our medium exposed to the air. Thus really evaporating the moisture out of here. This helps seal that moisture in. And when it looks dry on top, you just put your finger in it and uncover it and you'll see it's, it's pretty moist down there. Uh, also when you plant 
your seeds or your seedlings take some of this here and put it on your pockets as well or you may want to just put it in your pocket there and then put take a hole and then plant your seed and cover it up and then when you water it just like any other starter pot you just kind of want to Missed it. Missed it a good while, that way you don't disturb the surface and then wash your seed away. And your seedling will, your seed will come up nice and beautiful. Of course you want to plant many seeds in one pocket, that way you can thin them out later and pick from the biggest and strongest plants okay now that this is complete this will can this is all soaking wet and even though we filled up each tray and watered each tray as we went along it's going as you water it over the season it's going to continue to drop down so what we have here is a bucket of mix that is left over from all of this mixing and filling up the GT2 and you want to water it it probably put some drainage holes on the bottom just a couple keep it nice and watered until you see water coming out of the holes on the bottom and then check it on it every now and then and uh, dig down and as long as it's moist that's all you want because what's going on down in here as well as in your tower is that the natural stuff that we put in all the carbon is slowly breaking down the microbes are eating that and the worms are eating that there's worms in here too because remember we had our uh, worm castings which had some worms in it and some cocoons and we had our uh, composted hay and manure so there's worms in there there's cocoons in there and they're in in this as well and, and it's, as long as that just remains moist you don't want it soaking wet if it's soaking wet you're going to smother uh, your all your organisms your macrobes and your microbes you're just they're gonna you're gonna choke out the oxygen and then what you have growing are the unbeneficial microbes that plants don't feed on so <clears throat> this about wraps it up and the only thing left that we have to do is we can put a rubber band or something around this and keep it down Penny hose will work, will work as well. Uh, this breathes a lot better, which is why I uh, use a paint strainer. On behalf of the Garden Tower Training Project and WormFarmingRevealed.com, always remember: grow something amazing.